Hello, in this video we're going to cover cloud filtered custom mosaics. Uh, this notebook is used to create custom mosaics from Landsat data and what we're doing is filtering out the clouds and using a variety of tent techniques to come up with a final product that combines multiple time layers. So as with all the other notebooks what we do first is we have a, a bit of logic at the top that sets up the notebook. So here we're just suppressing some warnings. We're loading up the data cube configuration in the API. Remember in, the, in any of the prior notebooks, the only parts of these notebooks we would want to change is where it says change here. In this particular case, we would pick a product or platform so you can take Ghana Kenya, Tanzania, Sierra Leone, or Senegal, or if you have a different data cube, you can do it accordingly. In this particular case, we have chosen Landsat 8 for Kenya, and then this is the Landsat 8 product. I want to print out the extent of the cube, so I want to know what is my time extent and my latitude longitude extent. That way I, I make sure that I choose an appropriate region for my analysis, and I also choose a time range that's allowable. Here's another area that we modify, change here. This is where we select the analysis region. For this sample case that's already pre-run, we chose Mombasa, Kenya. So this is the latitude going from min to max, longitude from min to max, and the time period, which is in year, month, and day. So this is January 1, 2017 to January 1, 2018. So basically we have a mosaic for the year of 2017. I urge you to go back and look at the cloud statistics notebook if you wanted to get information about all of the time layers uh, within any given year and any given location. So the next thing it does is it zooms in and it shows you the um, boundary of the analysis case. So here it is in red shows you the boundary around Mombasa. It then loads up the data cube. It pulls all the bands that I want to analyze. It shows me what this X-Array looks like, and the X-Array is basically what is stored in memory. So it goes out and it looks into the Kenya cube, and it pulls out just the pixels it needs for the analysis based on the region and time frame that you chose. So based on the region that we chose here, we have 738 pixels in latitude, 743 pixels in longitude, and 19 time steps. Remember that Landsat, when it crosses every 16 days, can only see the ground tw about 23 times a year. So this means that we're getting a scene just about every overpass. The next part of the code masks out the clouds. Nothing needs to be changed. And now we look at the variety of mosaics that are created. And we don't change anything here, but we just review the results. A median mosaic takes the median value of the cloud-free pixels in the time series. So this is our median mosaic. You can see the water. It's a little bit dark, but if you were to take this out into your favorite GIS tool, you can lighten it up and it would look substantially better. A geo-median mosaic is another product. It's like a median, but we maintain the spectral band relationships. So it is a better product than a median. It's more computationally intense to create, but it creates a very nice product that is spectrally consistent. If you want more information, please go see the paper here written by some folks in Geoscience Australia. So this is the geomedian. It looks similar to the median. Most recent pixel says, I'm going to pick the most recent pixel in time for every, um, every single pixel. So the pixels could be from various times, but it's only the most recent cloud-free pixel. And finally, if I want something that's really green and I'm looking at peak vegetation at any part in the year, I might want a maximum NDVI, which is the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, and that is uh, a matter of greenness. And you can see if you compare most recent pixel, you can see how that's a bit brown, and this is much darker. This is the maximum vegetation in any, any part of the year. So whatever that is, probably your peak growing season associated with the rainy period. And then finally, we export the GeoTIFF. 
So after we run our sample case, the last thing we change here is if I want to export any one of these, and I have created all four of these, if I want to export the Geomedian composite, all I do is remove the comment line here so that it looks like this and it runs. I hit shift return and it will run this block and it will store it with this name. You want to change the name every time, otherwise it's just going to overwrite your old file. So keep that in mind. Also, you have to be careful and make sure are you allowed to write to this folder. If you need some help, please contact us and we'll see that it's running for you. So I'm going to show you lastly how to run this from top to bottom if I want to change the location. So what if instead of running Mombasa, I want to create a cloud-free mosaic somewhere else. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to do something for Nairobi. So let me go find Nairobi. And where was I? There's Nairobi. So if I want to go around Nairobi, what you can do in navigating once this is up on the screen, I can click anywhere and it shows me the latitude longitude boundaries. So it's best to choose the top left corner and then write down those numbers. The bottom right corner, write down the numbers. Make sure your area is not too big. I would suggest not doing anything more than about a half a degree by a half a degree. Otherwise, it gets slow and it doesn't run as well. So I'm going to do Nairobi. And so here's what we do. If I want to modify, I can just do a copy, paste. And now I'm going to say, okay, this is now going to be Nairobi, Kenya. I'm going to change this. I wrote down my numbers here, minus 1.37, minus 1.20. My longitude range is 36.75, 36.92. I now have to put a comment statement in front of the prior one. I'm going to run it for the same time period. So now I've got it all set to go. I go to the top and I hit kernel, restart run all, and we wait for it to run. As it is running, we can pay attention to a few things. Remember what it does when it starts running. It throws you down to the bottom, and as it's running cells, there's a star on the number line if the cell has not been executed. But what I can do is I can scroll to the top for people like me that are impatient, and I can watch it run. So notice it ran here. Line number one, that code ran. Line number two, that code ran. And line number three. So now we're at the case here where it's stuck at this point, which is basically an analyzing the latitude and longitude extents of our cube. It has done that. It's now said, okay, I'm going to find Nairobi. There it is. There's the analysis. So it's really nice. I got my new bounding box directly around Nairobi. Everything is looking great. The next thing it does is it comes down and it loads in the Landsat data set. This is the part that takes the longest. This DC load function is loading the pixels or the information that it wants from this bigger cube, and it's loading the smaller content into memory. Once it runs that into memory, then we can see what we have. So we have 628 pixels in latitude, we have 631 pixels in longitude, and 22 time steps over the year. It's masked out the clouds. There we go. We have a nice pretty scene. That's the median composite. That's the geomedian. Let's look at the most recent pixel. And we scroll down, and the last one is the maximum NDVI, which is the maximum greenness. So that's all. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on cloud-filtered custom mosaics.